Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to 1908. We've got the uh, Owen four, four Senators at the 4-0 Highlanders. You're probably wondering why I would um, want to highlight a game involving the 1908 New York Highlander as well as because they're still undefeated. And um, I can't remember if this is true or not. This might uh, actually be their home opener. I'm trying to take a quick look. No, it's not. They had their last series was at home, too, against uh, Philadelphia. Um, but uh, we want to highlight all the teams that we can that are playing well at the time. The Highlanders, at least for the moment, are playing quite well. Uh, the first batter is Jim Delahanty for uh, Washington Eagles, a 65 for a 35. And we have a little E rule. And the little E rule is a 42, which is relatively harmless, and that means that that's going to be a little foul out to uh, the uh, third baseman Conroy for the first out. And here is Clyde Milan. And uh, here is Milan. He rolls a 62 for a 12, and there's going to be another little E rule here in the early going. And uh, the rule is a 65. That's a little ground ball over to Chase. Hal Chase at first base makes a play by himself. Two away, and here's Jerry Freeman. And I wonder if Chase has any money on this one. This is the problem, right? When you're known for gambling, it doesn't matter what you do, good or bad. People only think about that. Freeman rolls a 45 for a 14. Jack Chesworth gives up the walk. And there's a runner at first base now. Two outs for Bob Ganley. Not much he can do here in this case. He rolls a 56 for a 34. And that's the third little E we've had in the half inning. And there's a 54. Three little E's, no errors. That's a pop-up over to Ball at shortstop who makes the catch. We go to the bottom of the first inning. Charlie Hemphill, Charlie Hemphill sorry, rolls a 24 for a 13. That is a strikeout for Long Tom Hughes. And here's Willie Keeler. We Willie Keeler up there rolls a 45 for a 14. He gets the walk, and he's going to be that runner on first. And I think this is a time, this is indeed a time for us to do a little bit of hitting and running with Harry Niles up there. The roll is a 31 for a 9, and that's going to end up being a ground uh, ball over to McBride at short. Makes the play at first, and that does move Keeler up to second, however. Two outs, and here's the man himself, Hal Chase, who actually pitched... Um, I don't know what this means, 0 0.3 innings pitch. He must have pitched one out in the uh, uh, game. I'm guessing that's meant to be one-third of an inning pitch. Chase rolls a 44 for an 8. That is little ground ball back to uh, Hughes, who makes the play at first base for the out. And we go to the top of the second inning. Otis Clymer's up there now. He rolls a 21 for a 30. That's a fly out over to left field. Stahl's got it for the out. One away, Bill Shipka now. Rolls a 23 for a 32. That is a fly ball over to the other side, and uh, Wee Willie Keeler's got it for the out two away. And here is George McBride. McBride rolls a 34 for a 44. We've got another little E to worry about, and it's a 41 is the roll, and that's another fly ball over to Keeler in center for the out. Lots of little E's so far in this one. Not a lot of errors. And here's Jake Stahl, bottom of the second inning. He rolls a 45 for a 14 and gets the walk, and up now comes Neil Ball, and it is bunting time. Interesting to note that both of my 1949 replay and it is 1908 replay, to, uh, for the moment at least, it's uh, the Boston and New York teams in the American League that are uh, dueling it out or duking it out. The roll for Ball is a 61 for a 30. That's a good bunt. That's a little bunt that goes over to third base to Shipka, and he throws over to Delahanty, covering it first for the out. Stahl moves up to second, and that brings a Wood Conroy. Now, here's the big dead ball era question, right, which is do you bunt with Conroy here or do you swing away with him? We're going to try to swing away with him. I think there's an argument you can make either way. But the reason why I'm going to swing away with him is because he's going to be a better hitcher, hitter than the catcher coming up next. And he rolls a 24 for a 13. That's another strikeout there by Hughes, second strikeout of the game. And here is Walter Blair, who, like I said, is a worse hitter than Wood Conroy. He rolls a 33 for a 7, and I'm going to have to eat my words there as that is a single for a uh, run uh, that scores a run. And the score now is one nothing Highlanders uh, just like that. And uh, we have a ball game on our hands, and uh, that's pretty impressive. I do, uh, I must say myself, um, for the... Uh, this Highlander team that keeps on winning and is definitely over uh, performing compared to um, how they did at um, this point in time in uh, real life. That means that uh, we have runner on first base now as I try. There we go. We have a runner on first base now with two outs in the uh, bottom of the second inning. And here is Jack Chesbro who will just swing away. Roll for Jack is a 56 for a 34, and that is a strikeout because of the Y for uh, Long Tom Hughes. Third strikeout of the game for him. We go to the top of the third inning. One nothing Highlanders. Senators looking for their first hit. Here is John Warner. 
rolls a 66. As soon as I say the magic words, he gets one. And then the second roll is a 13. That's a double. The game's just telling me that um, because Warner had no home runs in real life, the game's not going to try to give him a home run. That's a real debatable point, right? Whether the game engine should make that change or not. A lot of people get upset about this and people don't. In my personal opinion, uh, for the dead ball era, I think it's appropriate not to give him the home run opportunity. At any rate, here's long Tom Hughes, and we're going to probably bunt with him. He rolls a 43 for a 29, and that's a strikeout. You hate those 29s when you're trying to bunt. There's Jim Delahanty, and at least there wasn't some sort of double play as a result. Delahanty up there now rolls a 33 for a 7, and that is a base hit to right field, and that scores the run. And uh, just like that, the Senators have one back here in the top of the third inning. And, hey, maybe it's not going to be so easy after all for the Highlanders. And uh, it's a one-to-one -one ball game now. And up next with Delahanty, who's a slow runner on first base, and that's what you hate to see at the top of the uh, top of the order. Up next is uh, Clyde Milan. Now we'll t we'll check really quick on Delahanty's card, and he does have an 11. So despite the fact that he's slow, we can hit and run with him and sort of take our chances. He's not necessarily going to be caught stealing. The rule is an 11 for a zero for Milan, and then the next is a 33 for a two, and that is a triple to right. And uh, that scores one, and that, however, uh, means that Milan is thrown out trying to score at home. And boy, that's a really rare play, don't you think? That is an attempted an inside the park home run from uh, Clyde Milan, who was thrown out of the plate. <laughs> and um, this is not a play that you commonly see when you're playing um, APA type games. Man, oh man, he's thrown out of the plate. Um, great play there by it's a Keeler throwing over the cutoff man, Niles, who throws it down to Blair, who's really the backup catcher. And uh, that means the score is two to nothing now. Senators and Jerry Freeman's up there. And he rolls a 51 for a nine. That's a little pop out over to uh, Conroy at behind third base for the out. We go to the bottom of the third, Charlie Hemphill up there. And if you haven't been following my 1949 replay, the Senators went 0 and 10 before the uh, they finally beat the Yankees the other day. Um, so maybe this is going to be similar. I don't know. Senators at the Highlanders, same teams. Hemphill rolls a 61 for a 40. That changes over to 36. Doesn't matter. It's a ball either way. Next roll is a 55 for an eight. That is a little ground ball over to McBride at short. Makes the play to first one away. Here is Wee Wheelie Keeler. He rolls a 24 for a 13 for the strikeout. And that is strikeout number four from Hughes. And up comes Harry Niles. He rolls a 45 for a 14. That is the third walk given up by Long Tom Hughes. He's doing it all today. And here's Hal Chase again. Chase rolls a 15 for an 11, and uh, that gets him uh, the base hit to send Niles to third. Chase um, steals the base, uh, though with two outs, and the uh, Highlanders, about to say the Yankees, really had something going on here. We can talk more about um, these uh, nicknames for uh, ball teams at the time. There is this uh, misunderstanding that we have, thinking about it from a modern perspective, that, oh, these nicknames were thought of by the clubs. That's just simply not true. Most of these were nicknames thought of by sports writers, and some of them were uh, derogatory. They called the Highlanders the Highlanders because of where the ballpark was located. It was located sort of up on a hill. And um, uh, that's the reason why they had the name. The name Yankees, I think, doesn't really come around until later, but we can do some research on that to figure that one out. It's just easier, more natural to say Yankees. Here's Jake Stahl now, runners on second and third, and this is a dangerous, dangerous um, moment for the Highlanders, and he rolls a 46 for a 32. That's a fly ball out to um, Clymer and Wright, and unfortunately New York is not able to uh, capitalize on that rally and uh, they go down quietly here in the uh, third inning. We go to the top of the fourth inning, and um, uh, and it's uh, still 2-1 to one Washington. So you can't really accuse uh, Hal Chase of uh, completely selling out to the gamblers in this one. Um, so he's been having a fairly good game. Here is Bob Gainley, and the roll is a 62 for a 12, and we have a little E possibility. And I think 22 is pitcher, yeah. Uh, the rule is a 46, however, so it doesn't matter. That's a little uh, ground ball over to Chase at first, who does it by himself. One away, here's Otis Climber. He rolls an 11 for a 0, and the second rule is there. It's a 62 for a 6. Climber does have a home run in real life, and Chesbro has an L, which means that he has a very outside possibility of hitting it. Instead, it's going to be a 26 is the rule for that chance, and Climber ends up with a double. He's on second base with only one out, and here's Bill Shipka now, and we are going to bunt, I think, with Bill. We roll a 15 for an 11, and that beats out... Um, he beats out the bunt, and then he's able to steal as um, the next uh, batter. McBride is up there. You, um, If you haven't noticed yet, there's a pattern behind this. The 11s tend to indicate stolen bases. 
Um, and uh, that's just the way it is. It's the way not only that uh, APA works, but that's the way the national pastime worked as well. We'll have more on that game in the future. That puts up uh, George McBride with runners on second and third in an interesting uh, situation. Um, and um, I want to actually look at uh, John Warner's card. We can see it there. Warner has a better on-base percentage, probably more likely to reach first. The reason why I look at that and wonder is the question is, do I bunt with McBride or do I swing away with him? There's not too much bad that can happen if I swing away. Climber has that 11 as well um, and is not fast but has a little bit of speed. Um, looking really quick. Blair is not a great catcher. Um, I think that the um, right move here in real life would be to bunt with McBride, so we're going to do that. He rolls a 41 for a 28, and that's a foul strike. He bunts one foul. We're going to try it again. He rolls a 21 now for a 30, and that's a good bunt. It's a bunt that goes down to the third base side to Conroy. Conroy um, grabs it, has to make the play to first base to chase instead of having somebody cover. That might be a mistake by uh, Bill Staffa. I'm not sure about that. At any rate, it's now 3-1 to one Senators, and the bunt works, and small ball works. Um, and the next batter up, Warner, is a batter who I'm a little bit more comfortable with just swinging away. Of course, there's two outs, so we kind of have to do that. Runner on third base now is Bill Shipka. Here's John Warner. He rolls a 15 for an 11. That's going to score one, and that will give Warner, despite the S, the um, uh, uh, stolen base. And that means it's 4 nothing now, Senators. And uh, they're starting to run away with this one. And... Um, I don't know if the bunt was uh, necessarily the right move. I mean, you, as always, can tell me in the comments what you think about that, if you would have bunted there or not. Um, but uh, that's what we're going to do. And, I mean, after all, it is 1908. You've got to bunt sometime. Here's Hughes. The rule for him is a 52 for a 27. That's a ground ball over to Conroy. Makes the play at first base for the out. And that brings up uh, the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's Neil Ball, 4-1, to one. Senators. Rolls a 12 for a 24. And here we have a little E coming up. And um, I'm clicking too many times, screwing the game up. The rules of 25. It's out of the range. It means that's a ground ball over to McBride at short. Makes the play to first. One away. Here's Wood Conroy. And he rolls a 42 for a 32. That's a little fly ball over to Climber in right field for the out. Two away. Walter Blair now. And the rules of 45 for a 14. Fourth walk of the game given up uh, by Long Tom Hughes. That brings up Jack Chesbro now with a runner on first base, but uh, two outs. Chesbro is almost an automatic out, and he rolls a 16 for a 28. That's a ground ball over to McBride at short, and he makes the play the short way to second base. Still a handy for the out. We go to the top of the fifth. Jim Delahanty now. Now, you may know about his more famous brother, Ed, and they had a, the Delahanty's had a real famous baseball playing family back in the uh, 19th century and early, early 20th century. Delahanty up there now hits a 31 for an 8. He gets the base hit and then is caught stealing. Seventh hit of the game for the Senators as Chesbro is uh, down to a D. Not pitching all that well in this one. Here's Clyde Milan, who rolls a 32 for a 26. That is a ground ball to Niles. The second makes the throw to first for the out. We're not going to take Chesbro out that easily, though. In real life, he would stay on for a little while. That Q0 is what tells you that. Jerry Freeman now rolls an 11 for a 0, and uh, the next roll is a 13 for a 6. Now, Chesbro could give up the home run here. Let's see. The roll is a 24. That's out of the range. That ends up being a double for Jerry Freeman with two outs. Top of the fifth inning. Here's Bob Ganley again. He rolls an 11 for a 0. And, boy, the bats are coming alive for the Senators. And then a 62 for a 6. And we see this screen again as Ganley also had a home run somewhere in there. Rolls a 22, so it remains a double. And uh, that scores a run. And that means that it is 5 to 1 Washington. And um, up now is Otis Clymer. Still two away, 5-1 to one Washington as they're starting to run away with this. Climber rolls a 42 for a 13. He strikes out. Um, second strikeout of the game for Chesbro. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning, and here's Charlie Hemphill. He rolls a 14 for a 43. That's a fly ball to Ganley and left, one away. This game might seem like it's taking a little bit longer. A little bit of that's because of commentary, and a little bit more is because there's a lot more offense in this than we're used to in 1908. Cleeler rolls a 35 for a 14. Walk number five given up by Long Tom Hughes, who's having real problems with his control. And then he walks Harry Niles as well, and uh, that is walk number six. Here comes Hal Chase now with one out. Do we swing away with Hal? Down by four, I think we have to, instead of playing long, uh, uh, small ball. He rolls a 52 for a 27. Last thing in the world you want to do, that's a ground ball over to Shipke. He goes over to Delahanty at second for one, then on over to first where Friedman is for the double play. We go to the top of the sixth inning, and here's Bill Shipke. He rolls a 45 for a 14, and that's a walk. 
Chesbrough only giving up his second walk so far in this game, and here comes George McBride. We're going to do a little hit and run. Rolls a 43 for a 29. That is a ground ball back to Chesbrough. He goes to first with it. Shipkin moves up to second base, and here's John Warner with one out and some chance to do some damage. He rolls a 54 for a 45. That will bring up the little E. Rolls a 34, unfortunately, for him, and so that ends up being a little fly ball over to right field, and it's Keeler making the catch. Two away, and here's Long Tom Hughes. And uh, Long Tom rolls a 46 for a 13, and he strikes out. Third strike out of the game for uh, Jack Chesbro, and we go to the bottom of the sixth inning now, Jake Stahl. Hughes has only given up two hits, I was about to say, but Stahl rolls a 44 for an 8, and that winds up being, luckily for him, a, a ground ball to McBride, who goes to first for the out, one away. Here's Neil Ball. He rolls a 62 for a 12, and there's a little ground ball over to first base, and it'll be Freeman doing it himself two away, and here's Wood Conroy. He rolls a 55 for an 8, another ground ball over to McBride at short, and makes the play to first for the out, and that does that. Top of the seventh, here's Jim Delahanty. Delahanty rolls a 36 for a 33. A little E number does come up, and the roll this time is a 12, and so that ends up being a 15, which is an error on the left fielder. And uh, that's an error on Stahl as he misplays that one. And Delahanty is able to make it all the way to second base after that poor play by uh, uh, Delahanty. Uh, by um, I was going to say not Delahanty by Stahl. Delahanty is the runner. And here is uh, Clyde Milan. Uh, Delahanty on second base. Milan, fairly good hitter, number two hitter in the lineup. Five to one, Washington. We're not going to do anything fancy. He rolls a 41 for a 28. Ground ball over to Ball, who makes the play at second base. Delahanty, despite his slow running, is able to get to third base, even with the ball hit in front of him. And here's Jerry Freeman. And uh, the roll is an 11 for a zero. And we go second column. And we have a 46 for a six. Will Jack Chesbro give up the long ball? No, he will not. And that's a double, and that will score Jim Delahanty. It's 6-1 to one now, uh, Senators, and that's going to be it, I think, for Chesbro. Um, we're going to let his um, position come up, I think, in the top of the seventh. But Chesbro not pitching well at all here. Here's Bob Gainley. Rolls a 53 for a 17. That's changed to a 20, actually, and that ends up being a ground ball to Niles, who misplays it completely. And uh, Gainley able to go to second base on that air, and that scores the run. And here comes Otis Clymer now, 7 uh, to 1 Senators. And uh, Chesbro, I guess his ERA won't look too bad after this one because of the errors. There's a 14 for a 43, and we have another little E roll. But uh, And that's a 13. It's going to be another error. That ends up being an error again, this time on the shortstop on ball. Um, runner holds at second base, and Climber is able to make it to first base on the air on an infield uh, hit. And here comes Bill Shipka. And uh, we're not going to bunt. We're just swinging away. He rolls a 66 for a zero. This is going to probably rock Chesbro. Whoops, rock Chesbro out of the ballpark. And uh, second roll is a 31 for a two, and that is a triple. Uh, as you can see, by the way, that the uh, second column two or the first column two is still a home run in NP3, which is what it is in national pastime. Have to check on the Apple boards again and see if that's the case or not. Either way, Ship could knock Chesbro out of this game. And uh, I mean, who who are we going to go with? We can go with just about anybody we want. Um, what I'm looking at here are the uh, games started. We don't want to go with anybody who started a lot of games. We'll probably end up going with Slow Joe Doyle. Now, I am using real-life uh, transactions as best as I can, but they're not 100% accurate. They come from a homemade Diamond Mine baseball season for the most part. It would take a lot of work to get full, like, good transactions for 1908, and I don't have the time right now. I'd rather play the games. But maybe one day, McBride greets Doyle with a 66, and the next roll is a 43 for a 6. And uh, because McBride didn't hit any home runs, Doyle's M has no um, effect on him. That is a double scoring the run 10-1 to one now. Senators, five runs in this inning. Here's John Warner, and the rule is a 56 for a 34. And we have another little E to worry about, and it's a 13. And, man, those Senators have rolled little E's all day long. We've seen this one before. It's another error on a uh, ball that uh, keeps the uh, runner at second base um, frozen, um, but allows Warner to reach first. And here comes Long Tom Hughes. Senators are scoring their whole season's worth of runs here in one game. Hughes rolls a 32 uh, for a 26. That's a little infield pop-up over to Niles at um, – uh, second base for the second out, and here comes Jim Delahanty, and the Senators have batted around in this inning. Delahanty's rolled a 51 for an 8, and that is a ground ball over to uh, Conroy at third base. He makes the out at first for the uh, third out. Finally, 
Here comes Walter Blair now. Still only two hits for the Highlanders. Blair rolls a 52 for a 20, uh, 25, sorry, for a 9. That's a single for Blair for the third hit of the ball game, but unfortunately he tries to steal second afterwards. Doesn't work. We could take that off if we wanted to. I don't really see the point, honestly, because... I mean, you might as well try whatever you can if you're not getting anyone on base. Uh, Doyle's up there. He rolls a 52 for a 27. Ground ball over to Shipke. Roll, throws over to first for the out. Two away. Here is Charlie Hemphill now. And Hemphill rolls a 12 for a 25. That is a ground ball to second. Delahanty's got it. Moves over, Throws over to first for the out. And we go to the top of the eighth inning just like that. Here's Clyde Milan. 10 to 1 Senators. And this one's not even remotely close. Milan rolls a 54 for a 45. And uh, the second roll for the little E is a 31. That ends up being a, right, a fly ball over to a Keeler in right field for the first out. And here is Jerry Freeman. Rolls a 26 for a 27. That is a ground ball to Conroy. Makes the play at first for the out. Up comes Bob Gainley now. 10 to 1 is the score. Senators in the lead. Gainley rolls a 52 for a 27. That's another ground ball over to Conroy. Makes the out. And uh, here comes Willie Keeler. I tell you, Hilltop Park is probably empty by this time. Keeler rolls a 23 for a 32. Fly ball over to Climber in right field. Makes the out. One away. Harry Niles rolls a 43 for a 29. That one's tapped back to Long Tom Hughes. He makes the play at first for the out. And here comes Hal Chase. Chase rolls a 66 for a 0. And... A 46 afterwards for a six, and that's a double for Chase. Only the fourth hit of the game for New York. And up comes Jake Stahl, who rolls a 66. Man, the dice are hot today. And uh, the next roll is a 55 for a two, and there's a triple that will score Chase. Long Tom Hughes starting to tire a little bit, I think, here in the late going. Next up is Neil Ball. He rolls a 25 for an 11, and that's a base hit and then a stolen base for Ball. And up comes Conroy, three, 10 to three now. Conroy rolls a 15 for an 11 and uh, repeats the feat with the base hit and then the stolen base. 10 to 4 now. Will the Highlanders come back? Blair rolls a 14 for a 43. We have to roll for a possible error. There is no error, and that's a little fly ball to Gainley in left field, and that does it. 10 to 4 is the score now, and up comes Otis Clymer. Climber rolls a 52 for a 27. That's a ground ball over to third base, and it's Conroy who grabs it, throws over to first for the out, one away. Up comes Bill Shipka. Rolls a 26 for a 27. Again, same play, grounder over to Conroy. The vacuum cleaner, and here comes George Bell now, and he rolls a 21 for a 30, and that's a fly ball over to Stahl in left field who makes the uh, catch for the out. We go to the bob in the ninth, and we're going to hit for Slow Joe Doyle, and I think that we're going to put Elberfield in there. Yeah, we're going to pinch hit with Kid Elberfield and uh, sort of a last-ditch uh, effort. 10-4, to four. Highlanders now with seven hits after being stymized for most of the game. Stymied, rather. And Elberfield rolls a 36 for a 33 for a strikeout, and that's the fifth strikeout there for uh, Long Tom Hughes uh, in uh, eight and one-third innings of work. And here comes Charlie Hemphill with one out. He rolls a 12 for a 25. We do have a little E to worry about, though, again. And the roll's a 52, so nothing to worry about there. That's a ground ball over to Delahanty at second base. Throws over to first for the out, two away. And up comes Willie Keeler. And he rolls a 24 for a 13 for the strikeout. Sixth strikeout of the game for Long Tom Hughes. That does it. Final score, Senators 10, Highlanders 4. And this was a pretty wild game with a lot of offense. 14 runs, 19 hits. I thought this was the dead ball era, right? You never know what you're going to get with 1908. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.